Hi guys, my last video about the instructions on how to use the 3018 CNC was very appreciated by many viewers. After publishing that video, I still got many questions from viewers about setting up of the hardware uh, cam process in Fusion 360, how to use candle and a lot of other things. Today, I took the chance that one of the sellers on Amazon asked me to review their product to make a new updated version of that video. In return, the seller will give me this set of 3018 CNC Pro with a 5.5 watt laser for free. I will go from A to Z, from assembling the machine, testing the hardware, connect the machine to the computer, setting it up, do some 3D CAD and CAM, milling a part, and also I will show an example of importing an art project and setting the CAM for it. I might also show you how to use the laser at the end. Apart from the assembling of the machine, everything else will be applicable for both 3018CNC and 3018CNC Pro or any other machine that runs gerbil. But before starting, I want to assure you that not because I got this machine for free, I will only say good thing about it, I will be honest about its pros and cons. Now, let's get started with the unboxing of this set. Nothing special, the platform. Some greeting cards from the seller. Mostix is the brand of the machine. Use the manual. Some more manual for the offline controller. Power cable, USB cable. Those are the hand wheels that you can attach at the end of the axis. So you can turn the axis by hand. The one with the smaller hole is for the Z axis. These two stepper motors without the sharp at the back are for the X and Y axis. This is the laser. I will set it aside. Laser safety glasses. In this bag are all the nuts and screws that you will need. This one is for the clamps of the stock. Power supply, it feels a bit sturdier than the one that I had on the 3018 CNC, so I think it will be better. A set of 10 V bits. This one is the nut housing for the Y axis. These are the four linear bearings for the Y axis, linear rod for Y axis and X axis, less screws for the X axis and the Y axis, aluminum extrusions. I guess that these two short ones are for the base of the frame. Brackets, this one is for the back, this one is for the front. These two are for the X axis. It also have an ER11 collet. The Z axis is already assembled. The stepper model that have the sharp at the back to attach the hand wheel. This is the offline controller that you can use to jog the machine. This is the controller. Two brackets to stand on the side. USB drive. Supposedly, it should include the driver and the softwares to run this machine. Everything is out here. Let me just follow the manual and put the machine together. I think that the manual is pretty clear, so I just follow the steps. This one has the bearing. It should face inward. This one is the back. This one is the front. You will need this bag, M5T nuts, 16 pieces. Take two and slide them into the slot on the bottom side of the aluminum extrusion. Take six and slide three in each slot on the side. The side that has the nuts should face outward. Do the same for this one. Next step is to attach everything together using some of the M5 bolts. I think that you shouldn't tighten the bolts just yet because you still need to install the rails and the linear bearings. Now you can tighten all the bolts.
Somehow on this rod, the thread is a bit loose for the M5 bolts that they gave me. So I just use two of the longer M5 bolts that I have and they fit perfectly. I will use the same bolts for this rod. Next step is to install the last screw, hand wheel and the stepper motor for the Y axis. Take one of the coupler, install it on the shaft of the stepper motor. I think that the place to plug the cable, I will point it to the side, use the M3 bolts, slide through and fix the motor. Slide the last screw through here. Take one end of the untied backlash nut, slide it on the last screw, put the spring on, push it into the nut housing, press it, and turn it in. Make sure that the nut is inside this slot. Slide it into the coupler, tighten the set screw. For the next step, I think that it is easier to put the machine on the side. Take the M6 bolts. Take the T-nuts and put them loosely on the bolts. Now I just take the bed, the side that have three slots, face like this, the side that have four slots face up, you only need to slide the T-nuts into the slot. Try to center the bed to the frame. And tighten all the bolts. Now I just keep the machine upside down, take the rubber feet and fix them on the frame. Next step is to fix those two brackets on the frame. This side has the bearing, it should face inward like this. The round edge here should point forward to the front of the frame. I will fix one by one, this one first. Looking at this picture, I think that this edge here should touch this edge. To make it consistent on both sides, uh, I will take my blade, put it into the slot, and push this bracket all the way back to the blade until it cannot move anymore and tighten the bolt. Then I can remove the blade. I will do the same on this side. Now I flip to this page, I think that this side, I should leave it a bit loose, so I can install all the components on the x-axis. I will start by the stepper motor. The cable connector, I will make it point to the back. To fix these two bars, I will use some of the M6 bolts. Now take the Z axis, the linear rails for the X axis, 
and fix the rails onto the bracket. Now I think that you can tighten all the bolts. Take the last screw, slide it through here, turn it into the nuts here. Take the spring, slide it on the last screw, take the anti backlash nut, push it in, and slide the last screw all the way through. Push the last screw into the coupler and set the set screws. Now I will install the hand wheels. This will make the manual moving of the axis easier. I think that's it for the frame of the machine. Now I will install the controller board. I have the controller board right here, but I forgot to slide the T-nuts on the aluminum extrusion bar. And I don't want to disassemble everything here, so I will use some of the drop-in T-nuts that I have. I should follow the manual more carefully. It shows right here. I was trying to use the four nuts and bolts to fix the board on the two bars, but in the manual they said only use two on the top bar because the spacing between the two aluminum bars and the holes on the cover are not matched. So I will only use two. The cables for the stepper motors are of the same length, so it doesn't matter you use which one for which. The speedo connector. These two wires, you just plug them in for now. I think that it would be nice if they include some of the cable wraps. I have one, so I will use it to wrap the cables for the spindle and the X-axis stepper motor. You can use some of the zip tie to arrange the cables so they don't dangle around. For the cable of the y-axis, I will use some tape.
Now as you can see that I have all the cables arranged nicely. Next step, I will connect the offline controller just to test the machine very quickly. I don't think that I will use this controller often, but having it as a backup will be nice. It has a SD card that you can copy your G-code files on it, install it in here, and afterward you can run the cutting job from this controller. Now I will power the machine and move the axis around. The offline controller turned on. I will have to get used to the button a little bit. This axis step button is to change the mode to move the axis. For example, right now you can move it very fast, continuously. Or you can move it step by step. Yeah, very slow. One step at a time. It is moving a bit faster. It is to turn on and off the spindle. The spindle should turn in this direction, clockwise. Most of the cutting bits are made for cutting in that direction. If your spindle is turning in this way, just take these two wires and swap their positions. All the axes are moving in the right direction for me. One thing to notice about the Y axis, when you press the Y plus button, the bed should move to the front and the spindle moves to the back compared to the position of the bed. That is the correct direction. A lot of viewers got confused with this problem. When they press the Y plus button, they think that the bed should move to the back, but doing that, the direction is reversed. And when you cut something, the cut will be mirrored in the Y axis. And if any of your axis is moving in the wrong direction, you can reverse it using your computer. I will show you later when I connect the machine to the computer. Before doing that, I will show you how to make a touch probe that will be very useful later. And I will show you how to use it. You will need a female 2 pin D point connector like this. Two wires that are long enough. So you will have plenty access from the back to the front of the machine. You will need a metal plate that is conductive and measure the thickness of that plate. Mine is about 1.6 mm. I also drilled a hole on this side of the angled aluminum. First, I will connect the two wires to the connector. Now to the other end of the wires, one you will connect to this plate, the other one you can connect anywhere on the shell of the spindle. I will take one of the bolts that fits this hole, tighten it with the nut, not too much yet. I strip the wire, wrap it around this bolt. and tighten the nut and bolt. This wire, I will make a loop and tighten it on the shell of the spindle. And I will tape it here so it doesn't fall off. Now I will arrange the wire along with the cable wrap. At the back of the board, look for the pin A5. Just plug the connector in, it doesn't matter which way. And that's it for the touch probe. Now I will connect the machine to the computer and show you how to set up everything. Now I just plug in the USB drive, just came with the machine. I wanted to see what is included in here. Four of these folders are the manuals. You will only need to pay attention to this folder. I will start with this one, Gerbil Software 3 Access. I will install the driver first. And that's it, the driver is installed. If you don't have the USB drive, you can also download the driver from internet. Open your browser. Google CS340 driver. For me, I just click on the first link and download the driver for your system. For me, it will be Windows. Just say, unzip it 
and install it the way I showed you. Now, I can connect the machine to the computer using the USB cable. Next step is checking if the machine is correctly connected to the computer. Right click on this PC or my computer, properties, device manager, and go to ports, com, LPT. You should see this USB serial CS340. For me, it is COM3 and I will keep that in mind. Now, go back to the USB drive. Gerbo control, it is candle 1.1.7, so it is pretty recent. I will copy this folder to the C drive. You can also download Gerbo controller, candle from internet. Open your browser, Google Gerbo controller, candle. It should be the first link. Scroll down. Download the one for your system. Unzip it and then you can copy it to the C drive like I did. Create a shortcut on the desktop. Now open Candle or Gerbo Control. Right now in the console, you say serial port error. I go to service, settings. Change the port to COM3 and click OK. And you can see here, now candle is connected to the machine. The Jobo version is 1.1F, so it is also recent. If your Gerbo version is old, you can upgrade it to the latest version. Just go to GitHub, download the source code, and you can upload the firmware using Arduino IDE. I will show you how to do that at the end of the video. Now, at the command line, I will type in double dollar sign, dollar, dollar, enter. Here are all the settings of the machine on the controller board. I will copy all these parameters and save them in one of the text files. Now it's done. I will be free to modify any parameters and I can always go back using the text file. If the direction of any axis on your machine is reversed, you can always change it using dollar number 3. Let me pull up the Gerbo manual and show you which number you should use. Here on Gerbo website, just go down and click on direction port invert mask. You should roll up a little bit. And here are all the configuration masks on my machine. Dollar 3 is equal to 3, which means that the x axis is already reversed, and also the y axis, the z axis is not reversed. So, this bit is for the x axis, this one is for y axis, and this one is for z axis. And now, for example, if your z axis is reversed, you only need to change this bit from 0 to 1, then the mask will be 1, 1, 1, and the number for dollar 3 will be 7, something like that. So, it's very simple. For me, I don't need to do anything since the original configs are correct. Next step, I will check the dollars 30. Right now, it is set to 1000. I will change it to 10,000. Just type dollars 30 equal 10,000. Then type double dollar sign again to check. It changed to 10,000. This is the resolution to control the spindle speed. I put 10,000 so it will be easier to control the spindle speed using the CAM software. And I go to service, settings. I look here at the spindle speed. Min is 0. Max, I will change to 10,000. And click OK. Now it will be a lot easier to read the real speed of the spindle. If I pull it to 10,000, the spindle will turn at the maximum speed, which is 10,000 RPM. Next step is the jaw control here. These four buttons are for the X and Y axis. These two are for the Z axis. You can move it continuously. 0 0.01 step, 0 0.1 step, 1 step, 5 step, 100 step. It depends on how fast you want to jaw. 
Just be very careful when you go fast. If you hit the end, the stepper model will lose its steps. For me, I prefer continuously and change the feed rate to 500 for example. And I will change the number depending on how fast I want to move. And now to these buttons, you will mostly use these three. This homing button, if you don't have the homing switches, you can ignore it for now. This one is the Z Pro button. I will show you how to configure it and how to use it. This one is to zero the X and Y axis when you set up the stop. This one is to zero the Z axis. If you use this button, you can ignore this button too. Let me show you quickly how to program this button. Go to service, settings, and you can change the probe command here. All the code lines that are already in here are pretty much correct. This code line is to roughly probe the Z axis. You will move the beta with the maximum range is 30 mm at the feed rate of 100 mm per minute. Once the touch probe is activated, that means the bit is touching the metal plate. You will move to this line, moving the Z axis up 1 mm. And then it will run the fine probe command. This time it moves a lot slower at the feed rate of 10 mm per minute. The maximum range will be 2 mm. Now I will add my own parameters. G92, Z1.6. This line means that now the bit is touching the metal plate. And I will set the Z axis position to 1.6 mm. That is the thickness of the metal plate that I use for the touch probe. For different metal plate, you can put different number here. After setting the Z axis position, I will move the bit up 3 mm from the touch probe. G0, Z3, and that's it. The Z probe button is set up. I click OK. That's it for Gerbo and Kendo right now. Next step, I will show you how to use Fusion 360 to create a port. Set up the CAM process for that port. Generate the G code files and cut that part out using this 3018 CNC. On your browser, type in Fusion 360. Free. It will be Fusion 360 for personal use. Scroll all the way down. Click on Get Started. Enter your email address. Once you press enter, if it said this email or username is not recognized, click on create account and enter your information. Now you can download and save the installation file. Run it. I will show you the next step when it is done setting up. Once installed, you will need to sign in using your account. Now Fusion 360 is ready to use. As an example, I will create a very simple port. Click on create sketch. Choose a plane. I will create a circle. Click on sketch dimension. I will put 60 mm and finish sketch. Now I just highlight the sketch, click on extrude. Select this profile and enter how thick you want to extrude. For me, I will put 13 mm because I have a piece of plywood is 13 mm thick. Now you have the first body, you can change the angle of the view by holding down the shift button and also press down the roller wheel on your mouse. Then you just move the mouse around like this. 
can also move the view by pressing down the control button and also the roller wheel on your mouse and move the mouse around like this to zoom in and out it is easy just use your roller wheel now I want to round this edge I will click on fill it click on the edge enter the radius 5 millimeter next I will create a square in the middle of the piece I click on create go to rectangle and create rectangle from the center go to dimension I will put 30 and 30 finish sketch click on edge root operation cut choose the profile I will go down the other side and put 6 millimeter now I have a square hole in the middle I will fill it the edges here I will put 3 millimeter I will create another hole in the middle here I drag it all the way through click OK now let's set up the cam to cut this piece out I click on this button go to manufacture first step click on setup this is to set up the stock of the piece this view will be easier Z axis, Y axis, and the X axis. You can leave the origin at the middle here. I prefer this one at the corner of the stuff. And here for the side offset, I will put 10 millimeter. For the top offset, I will put zero. Then I click OK. Next step, I will have to add some tool to the library that I can use later to cut this piece. Click on the tool library. Go to local, library. I can rename this. Click on add, new tool. I will create a flat end mill first. Here, for the name, you can put anything. I will put one eighth of an inch. Flat end mill. Number of flute. I only have single flute end mill. I will put one. Diameter. One eighth of an inch is 3.175 millimeter shaft diameter will be the same as the diameter of the tool overall length 50 is fine length below holder I will put 30 shoulder length 25 flute length on my bit it is 22 millimeter you can measure all these parameters using your caliper or you can also look at the data sheets of your bit shot I don't need this holder I will try to find ER11 somehow Fusion 360 removed it but I can also ignore this it's not really important here I go to cutting data 
The maximum speed of my spindle is 10,000 RPM. I will use this speed most of the time. I will put 10,000 RPM. Cutting feet rate. I will put 1000 mm per minute. And all these parameters will be fine like this. Plunge rate. I can go a little bit slower. 150 mm per minute. Colon. I don't have anything. I will disable. And that's it. I click accept. I will create another bit, it's the bone nose. I can use it to smoothen the round edge later. If you don't have a bone nose bit, you can skip this tool and tool pass. But you surely should get a few flat and mill bits. Now I can close the tool library. For the first cutting operation, I will cut this pocket. I will click on 3D pocket clearing. Select the tool. Go to library. Click on this one, the flat end mill. That's what I will use first. All these parameters will be fine. I will leave them like that. Machining boundary. I will click on selection and click on this one. This means that the machine will only cut inside the boundary. Tool center is inside the boundary. Additional offset, I will leave at zero. Nothing to change here. Here, I will reduce a little bit. Four, two. These two numbers are to reduce the retraction of the bit, so the machine will cut a bit faster. For the bottom high, I want to cut through the bottom of the piece. I will put something negative from the bottom of the model, minus 0.5 millimeter. Here, tolerance, you can increase it if you want to cut more precisely, but that will take longer, so I will leave it like this. Maximum roughing step down, because the 3018 CNC is not very powerful, I will leave it at 1 millimeter. Stock to leave. I don't want to leave anything. I uncheck this. I go to linking, retraction policy. I always choose shortest path. Here, I can increase it a bit for the ramp so it will cut faster. 5 degrees. Ramp clearance high. I will put 1 millimeter. You can change it to smaller number. If you have smaller hole, for example, if this hole is only 4 mm, I would reduce the ramp diameter to 0.3 or 0.5 mm. But for this hole, because it is a lot bigger compared to the bit, I will leave it at 3 mm. I click OK. I have the first two paths here. It cut all the way through the bottom. That's what I wanted. I'm going to leave it like that. I will create the second tool pass. It's the adaptive clearing to clear out the stock around the model. I go to 3D, adaptive clearing. I will use the same tool. I will leave everything the same here. For machining boundary, I will choose silhouette. This means that the machine will only cut along the edge of the piece. Two will be outside the boundary. For additional offset, I will leave it at zero, just to show you what will happen. For the rest machining, yes, I don't want to recut this pocket. I will check this. 
source. I will choose from previous operations. Here, I will do the same, reduce the numbers. Bottom hard. I don't want to cut all the way down here. That will take a lot of time. Uh, I will choose from model top and down 6mm. Tolerance, I will keep at 1mm. Maximum roughing step down. I will have to reduce this to 2mm. Fine step down. If you keep at 0.2mm, it will take long time. I will increase it to 0.5mm. Stop to leave, nothing. Retraction policy. I change it to minimum retraction. I will increase this to 5 degrees. And this minimum ramped diameter, I can reduce it to cut a bit faster. 1 millimeter and click OK. As you can see here, it cut a little bit, but not all the way down to 6 mm. This because I didn't put enough additional offset, so the tool cannot go all the way out here. I will modify it. Right click, edit. Additional offset, I will put 5 mm. This number should be bigger compared to the tool diameter. Click OK. Now you can see that it cut all the way down to 6 mm. That is better. Next step, I will smoothen this fillet. So I click on 3D. I will choose spiral. Change the tool to ball nose. Center point. I will click on this edge so the center will be the center of the piece. Machining boundary. I think that I will choose selection. I will click on this boundary and this one. What I did here is that I choose two boundaries and the cutting will be limited in between the two boundaries for the two center. I will choose the two inside the boundary and additional offset will be minus. 5. So we can cut minus 5 on each boundary. Here I will choose 4, 2, the same. Bottom high. From model top. Minus 6. Tolerance. I keep the same. Step over. If you want to cut really smooth, you will reduce this number. If you want to cut fast, coarse, you can increase it. For me, I will reduce it to 0.3 mm. The smaller the number, the smoother the edge will be. Shortest path. And I click OK. Now, as you can see, we go down here to smoothen the edge. Last step, I want to cut this piece out using a 2D contour along the edge of this piece. So I click on 2D, Contour, Tool. I will go back to the flat end mill. The 2D Contour tool path will have a lot of loading on the bit. I will have to reduce the cutting feed rate to 500 millimeter. Plunge rate, I will also reduce it. 100 millimeter. Contour selection, choose the bottom contour. Tap, you check it. Tabs are those small rectangles to help holding the piece to the stop so it doesn't fly out when the bit cut all the way through the stop. Tap high because I am cutting plywood so the small tap will be very brittle. I will need to increase the thickness. I will put 2mm. 
tap distance. Uh, it depends on how many taps you want. For me, I want to reduce the number of taps. I will increase it 40 millimeter. I think four taps will be enough. Move on to this. Here, I will reduce it four, two, one. Selected contour. I want to cut all the way through minus 0.5 millimeter. Here, multiple depth. This is very important because the machine is not very powerful. If you don't check this and change this, the machine will try to cut all the way through using one single pass and it might break a bit. So remember to check and reduce this. One millimeter seems to be right. Here, nothing to change, so I click OK. As you can see that it cut multiple passes until it reached the bottom. Let me just run a quick simulation to see how it cut. If something goes wrong, you should see it and be able to correct it. You can simulate each two paths separately by right click on the two paths, go to simulate, or you can do all of them at once. Right click on setup, simulate. I don't want to see the model. I click here on the eye icon next to the model. The model will be hidden. I can increase the speed a little bit, make it faster, and run. Everything seems to be cut correctly. I close this. Next step is exporting the two paths to G-code files so the machine can follow the instructions of the files to cut the piece. The first two two paths will use the same tool. I will highlight them both by holding down the control button and click on them. Right click. Choose post process. If you do this for the first time, you will have to click here, go down until you see gerbil slash gerbil, click on it. You can also change the output folder here. I will create a folder on the desktop. New folder 3018 CNC. G codes. Select folder and click on post. Now I can name it. I will put to path 1 3.175 millimeter flat and mu and save. I can open that folder and open that g-code file using any text editor. This line here, g28, g91, z0, that might mess up your cutting job because you don't have the homing switches or set up the home position. So when the machine runs this line, it will move the z-axis to a random position. It might cut into your piece already. You want to remove it, you can do it manually every time. At the top of the file and also at the bottom right here but doing that every time is very tedious i will show you another trick back here in fusion 360 i will do post processing again now you go down here in this area you will see safe retracts it is g28 click on it and choose clearance high and that's it. You click on post and replace this one. Save. Yes. You can open it again. And you can see that the G28 line is no longer there. Also at the end of the file, the G28 lines are removed. I will continue to export the other two paths. Three point 
three millimeter bone nose. T3, save. Now I will set up a stop on the machine and show you how to run those G code files. To fix the stop on the platform, I will use the clamps that came with the machine. To set up the clamps, you just take one of the bolts, go through here. The other bolt, go the other way through the slot. And use this nut to tighten on top. This can be the stock that I will use. And this can be the spacer, or I call it the waste bore, that you can put underneath this piece. The reason is that you want to cut through the piece and you don't want the bit to touch this platform. That's why you need a spacer to lift the stock up. Now slide this end of the bolt into the slot of the bed. Adjust this bolt. Something like this. Now press firmly on the stop and tighten this bolt. I think that the bolt head that go underneath the bed should be bigger so it doesn't rotate when tightening the nuts. Apart from that, I think that the design of the clamps is smart. Here are the two bits that I will use, one eighth of an inch flat end mill. And this one is the bone nose, 3 mm diameter. To install the bit, I will use the ER11 nut and also the ER11 collet. You just take the collet, press it all the way into the nut until it clicks, like this. Then slide the bit into the collet. I will move the spindle over. Move it up. Now, remember to use the wrench to tighten the bit. The machine came with the two wrenches. I think that the wrenches are a bit loose. There is a lot of space around the nut. They can be a bit tighter. Now, I will have to set the zero position on this top. If you don't want to use the touch prop, or if you don't have one, you can zero the z-axis manually by lowering the bit until its tip almost touch the surface of the stock. But doing that is very tedious and not consistent. I definitely recommend using the touch probe. I will put the touch probe under the bit. Press it down very firmly. And click on z-probe button. That's it, the z-axis is zero. Now I move the bit to a corner and zero the x and y axis. Click on zero, x, y. I'm done setting up the stock. Next step is to load the g-code file. Click on open. Load the t1 first. And then you can click send to send the job to the machine.
The first two parts is done. Everything seems to be cut correctly. I will change the tool to the bone nose. Now, because I changed the tool, I will have to rerun the Z-axis tool probe. Load the second G-code file and send. Next step, I will change back to the flat end mill to cut this piece out. As I told you before, that the plywood is very brittle, the tabs weren't big enough to hold the piece in place. Next time, I should make the tabs even bigger, but the final piece will cut perfectly. As shown in the simulation, the round edge is really smooth, where it was smoothened by the bow nose bit. Until now, I show you how to make a port that you designed yourself. Let me show you examples how to set up the two paths for the 3D model that made by other people. Most of designers will export their models into a step file or STL file. I will start with the step file. Open. Open from my computer to the location that you download the step files. I will choose one of the random ones that I have here. This piece is already aligned to all the axes, but if you need to rotate or realign, you click on this, move, copy, choose a center, then you can rotate in any orientation, and that's it. Next step, you just go to manufacture, set up the stock and the tool pass as I showed you before. To know which tool pass to use, you only need to practice a bit. And remember to run the simulation before you export the G-code files. Make sure that the simulation runs correctly. Now I will show something more difficult. It's the STL files. Let me find a free model, download it, and show you how to set it up. I will try something is free and really simple. Maybe this dog. And here, when you create a new file, go to Insert, Insert Mesh, go to the file you just downloaded. The previous version of Fusion 360 didn't allow you to import STL files that have more than 200,000 mesh, but they fixed that issue. Now you can import any STL file without any problem. Next step, you want to align this face to this plane. I think that you will need to rotate along the x-axis uh, 90 degrees. Yes, just like that. And then you click on move to ground. Perfect. Now I click OK. Now I can go to manufacture. Create a stock. Same thing. I will choose the reference here at the corner. And here, stock side offset. I will leave some margin, 
10 millimeter this one I think one millimeter will be safe because you should show about the surface of the wood so it will be flat and consistent I click OK next step I will do adaptive clearing again I will choose the flat end mill I will keep the same parameters as default machining boundary I will do silhouette tool containment inside the boundary additional offset I will put minus 5 rest machining uncheck this here I will put 4 2 bottom high I will leave at 0 like this tolerance 0.1 mm it is an art you don't need precision maximum roughing step down 2 mm fine step down I will put 0.5 mm stop to leave maybe I will leave a little bit like 0.2 mm retraction policy minimum retraction I will increase a little bit ramp clearance high 1 mm this I will leave at 3 mm and click OK now you have a roughing path next step is to do smoothing I will use the ball nose again you can skip this tool path if you want to and I will use the parallel path maybe I will go a bit slower to make it smoother 750 machining boundary silhouette again here I will reduce this maybe I should add additional offset I will put 3 mm bottom high I just keep like this step over 1.5 mm it will be a rough smoothing shortest path and that's it click OK now as you can see that it still doesn't look like anything next step I will create a V bit that is very pointy that you can use to make a lot of details on the model go back to tool library click on this add a new tool look for chamfered mill like this I will type V bit let me check the bit set that came with the machine the bit that came with the machine is 30 degree 0.1 millimeter tip chamfered mill yes number of flutes I would say 1 diameter 1 eighth of an inch shaft diameter tip diameter will be 0.1 millimeter overall length I think it is about 40 millimeters length below shoulder I will put 25 shoulder length 20 well flute length I don't know maybe 10 millimeter and degree 30 degree will be this angle and here this angle is only half I will put 15 degree that looks about right so I just continue 10,000 rpm cutting feet rate I will reduce it a little bit plunge rate maybe I will reduce it to 
200 disable colon and accept and close now I will add another two paths vbit silhouette everything is the same additional offset maybe I will put one millimeter this I will put again four two the same here tolerance the same step over the bit is 0.1 millimeter you want the step over to be 0.1 millimeter or less it will take long time to cut but if you want a lot of details that's the price to pay i will click on smoothing that will make the machine cut a bit faster shortest path and that's it click ok now it looks a lot better let me run a simulation to make sure that everything looks correct And you can see that it looks really good. There's a lot of details. Let's see how the machine cut. Here, you will do the same. Export the two paths for each tool separately. The surface is really smooth because I cut the parallel path this way. There's a lot of things just stuck on the motor so you don't really see the details. Let me just make another two path that parallel this way. Hopefully I can remove all the things just stuck on the motor. Here I just duplicate this one. And edit it. I will change the path direction to 90 degree. And that's it. Click OK. 
Let me just run this path. The path this way makes the motor a bit cleaner. I just scratch everything off with my finger. And now the surface is really smooth, but the motor is really small. I don't think that you can see much details here, but that is the process that you should use to cut the 3D out really. Next step, I will try to test the laser. First of all, you will have to loosen this screw. Use the wrench, just slide in the between of the slot here. Lift it up a little bit. Take the spindle out. I hate doing this, but I have to detach this wire. Put the spindle aside. Now I take the laser. Supposedly, you just slide this in here. It has the four notch here, so just slide it in. I don't like to force things so I'm not going to slide it in this slot. What I will do is that I will stick this laser around here, like this. You can stick it on the side or at the front. I will do it at the front this time. And if I knew that I would do this, I wouldn't remove the spindle. This is the controller for the laser. This is the power cable, so I just plug it in here. Plug this end to the controller board. Now I will read the manual to see how to use the laser. I think that I will use light burn instead of using this software because that's what I am used to. I just open light burn. I will try to invent something really simple just to test the laser. I will write a text. I think the size is about right. I will only engrave the outline of the text so it will take less time. Now let me just focus the laser. Remember to put on your goggle. Take this piece of paper. Try to get the smallest point possible. Okay, so let's get started. The laser wood, but somehow it didn't turn up in between the engraving. So I think that I would have to switch the controller board to laser mode. I would have to change the dollars 32 to 1.
chasing the dollar 32 to laser mode, it actually worked. So I'm going to try to engrave a picture. So the laser worked really well. One more thing to remember when you use the laser, you also need to change the dollar 30 to 1000. So you have two things to change, dollar uh, 30 to 1000, dollar 32 to 1. And when you use the spindle, dollar 30 to 10,000, dollar 32 to 0. The last thing I will show you is how to upgrade the firmware of your controller board. First of all, you will need to download the Arduino IDE. Download the one for your system. Run the installation. After setting up the Arduino IDE, you will have to download the latest version of Gerbo. I think that it will be this one. Jobo 1.1 has been released here, so I just click on it. The latest version is 1.1H, even later than the one that I have. I will download it. I will download source code dot zip. Once you download Jobo, extract it. Go inside this folder, copy this folder, Jobo. Control C, go to local disk, C drive, program powers, go to Arduino, libraries, and paste the folder here. Now, open Arduino IDE. Plug in your machine. Go to tool, port. Choose the port for your machine. For me, it will be COM4. Board, it will be Arduino Nano. Processor will be a bootloader. Check the include libraries. You should see Gerbo right here. Go to file, click on open. Go to C drive, program files, Arduino. Libraries, Gerbo examples, Gerbo upload. Click on Gerbo upload dot ino and click on verify. It's done. You can ignore all the warnings. Now you can click on upload. And that's it, Jobo is done uploading to your machine. Now, open candle. As you can see here, the version of Jobo is 1.1H. I will type in double dollar sign. I will compare to the text file that I saved before. It seems that upgrading the firmware doesn't change the parameters of your board. And that's it, you have the latest version of Gerbo now. In conclusion, I think that this machine is a lot better compared to the original 3018 CNC. It is sturdier and also a lot easier to put together, but there are still things can be improved. For example, the holder here doesn't fit very well with the laser. 
maybe also the bracket at the back it should poke out the side a little bit that would make the installation of the side brackets a lot easier and maybe only me who had this problem that the rails here the M5 bolts were a bit loose I had to use my own M5 bolts I hope that this video will detailed enough to help you getting started you will only need to practice a little bit with the cam software after that I'm sure you can do amazing things with this machine